Welcome to the third video in our series about building a brushed quadcopter. Now this is the little guy finished. I would recommend if you are following along this video that you absolutely do not have your props installed because when you plug it in for the first time there's a very good chance that the motors will all start running and make your life really interesting if you put the props on. So make sure that your props are off right until the very end of this video. The bit where we go out to do our test hover is the bit where you should be connecting the props. Now in the next video in the series we'll actually do a full review of this model. Now we have it built and it's flying and by the end of this video we will have our first test hover under the belt. So in this one what we're going to do is we're going to go through what you need to set up on the radio, what you need to set up in beta flight because this flight controller is actually running beta flight and then we'll show you a quick test hover and a little bit of FPV footage from the little onboard camera too. Now we have delayed the third version of this video because we've been just getting this as good as we possibly can. And we've actually been working along with the vendor. The vendor of this product is Cortex RC. So I need to say thank you to those guys. There's a link in the description if you want to buy the same kit. Because there's a couple of things that were changed because we were playing with the product right at the very early days of its inception. The first thing you'll probably notice is the battery size has changed. Uh, the battery that now comes with the kit is much, much smaller. It's now a little 380 milliamp hour pack as opposed to a whacking 500 milliamp hour pack. Now that might not sound a lot, but there's actually quite a big difference in weight. So if I just show you the difference here, there's the smaller pack is 20, the bigger pack is 31. So that 10 grams makes all the difference. The overall weight of the entire model is about 84 with the lighter battery and it's about 94 with 95 with the heavier battery. With a heavier battery the flight performance isn't great at all and it feels very sluggish and slightly underpowered even with these big motors. So that's just something to keep in mind. The setup we have here is reasonably heavy for something like this, it's about 84 grams, uh, but it's flying fine. The other thing I'll talk about as well is these flight controller boards that we have in the middle of here. Now we looked at some of these at the very beginning of the series, and these are these little F3 brushed flight controllers. But in our playing with this stuff, we have discovered that not all of these have been created equal. Now the one that comes in the kit uh, which is actually a black version, which you can't really see in there. You might be able to just kind of make that out. Uh, it's kind of a black version as opposed to the green one we first used, is this one has a couple of little challenges. The first is that a lot of F3-based flight controllers don't like 2S, and the higher voltages tend to give them a bit of a headache. So if you're buying one of these, make sure that it will support 2S and you've got the vendors back up in case there's a problem. So this... So none of the boards that we've had here had that problem with 2F, they've all worked beautifully. But the challenge that we did have was how much current the onboard 5 volt battery illuminator circuit was actually putting out. Now this version of the board that we originally tried had a bit of a problem and it was struggling to run the camera as well as the receiver. So when you powered the model on, all that happened was the radio started freaking out saying that the receiver voltage was below the specs. And uh, you could tell there was a problem because the little pretty lights that come on on the back of the FPV transmitter were flicking. And if you tried to arm the board, then it completely lost the plot. There potentially is a way around that if you've got one of these boards and it isn't providing enough 5 volts. If you use something like this from Matex Systems, this is a really, really small 5 and 12 volt battery illuminator circuit. It's really small, amazingly lightweight. We've used them on a couple of small quads where we've had a problem and we could wire this one side into the battery terminals at the back and the other side the 5 volts to run the receiver and also to run the video transmitter as well. That would be the option that adds a little bit more weight. We've used this in a couple of the small brushless quads that we've been playing with uh, because some of the beta boards that we've been playing with here haven't got an awful lot of oomph in the 5 volt BEC. So with all that said, let's crack on and show you what we've done with the radio. Now the radio itself is pretty standard stuff. All we've done is we've set up a standard model here. So if I just swipe back, you can see that we have the throttle, rudder, elevator, and aileron all set on those channels. 
And the other thing I've done is I've also set up two of the extra switches. I set up this switch here so that it moves into three positions. That will do my flight modes. That's channel five, or what we'll see as auxiliary one in beta flight in a second. And finally, I've this little switch in the middle I've assigned to ch channel six, and that's going to be my arming switch for the Model 2. So if we just go back into the menus, let me show you how I've done that. If we click on auxiliary channels, you can see that channel five is set to switch B, and channel six is set to switch A, which is that one there. And what you do is you just select the channel that you're interested, and then you can click on the control that you want and set it up. If you're not completely familiar with how these radios works, we have a complete channel on the FlySky style interface, which is the one that this little guy is using. So once we've got that set up, we're almost there. There's only one other thing that we probably need to check we've got set up here, which is the receiver mode. So if we click on output mode, I have made sure that it's outputting PPM and SBUS and then bind to the receiver. Once that's set, we can jump onto the computer and we can start to set everything up. Again, at this point, don't have your props installed, I would recommend that you definitely have your battery installed, but before installing your battery, just do one last thing. Double check that the little soldered connection on the board is soldered for 2S before you plug a 2S battery in. If it's soldered for 1S, it will fry parts of the board. If it's not, if neither of these contacts are soldered, then it won't power on. So if you plug it in, it doesn't power on, don't panic. Just double check those solder connections just down here at the bottom of the flight controller. Okay, PC time. So now we've got the radio set up, the next thing to do is set up everything in beta flight. Now the actual board that we're using here is come with beta flight, which is exciting. Now the way you check what your actual board is running, um, and by opening the board in the wrong version of the GUI, so if it's a clean flight board and you're using the beta flight graphical user interface like this, it doesn't harm anything unless you start writing lots of settings back because there is slight differences in the way some of the stuff's stored. But if we jump into the CLI and we type in version, this will show you exactly what it's running. And we can see here that the board in this little brushed quadcopter is fantastically running beta flight. It's version 3.0.1 and it's the SP Racing F3 Evo target. So this is a slightly different version uh, than some of the other brushed boards that we've played with. But the fact it's running beta flight already is great. So let me exit out of this and uh, it'll reboot the board, we'll reconnect, and then let me just go through very quickly what you need to do and what the settings need to be in order for this to work here in beta flight. Again, if it's clean flight, the settings are very, very similar. The layout's slightly different in the graphical user interface. You can see I have my battery connected and we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're gonna enable expert mode so I can show you all the bits you need to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the accelerometer, put the flight controller and the model on a very flat surface, click on calibrate accelerometer and um, it'll sort that out. Ours is pretty flat, so I'm happy with that. Uh, going to ports, uh, we are using SBUS, our PPM for this little flight controller, so in that case, you're gonna have to turn on the serial receiver part for UART 2 that's where we have the bits and pieces plugged in. Once you've done that, click save and reboot. Go into configuration, couple of key things you need to do in here. Uh, that little beep in the background is the turn G evolution complaining that it's been sat idle for too long. Uh, you're going to have to make sure that the ESC motor features is selected for brushed. If you have it selected for one shot or one of the other bits and pieces, the motors will start when you plug the battery in for the first time. Now, as we've already talked about, the props are not installed in the model, and that's the very last thing you do once you're happy that everything's working. But if you plug the battery in without doing any of this configuration, then the motors will start running and uh, it can be quite a scary proposition. I've turned on motor stop, that wasn't on there by default. Uh, motor stop, so when I disable the props, they stop running. If I'm gonna be flying indoors, I don't like the idea of props running around as it's bouncing over the carpet. And then the final thing, make sure your maximum throttle is 2000 if you're on a brush setup. Apart from that, we've set up the receiver as a serial receiver and selected SBUS. 
The VBAT stuff is all turned on. You probably noticed, actually, if we just go into setup, uh, you can actually see all the bits and pieces here for what's actually going on uh, with the battery that's connected, which is quite cute for this little brush board. If we just finish here at the bottom, uh, I've turned off all of the features by default on the target. It had things like telemetry was turned on, black box was turned on. I've turned all that jazz off because you know what? We don't need that on this little machine. Click save and reboot. Fail safe, I've turned on, I've set it so that in the event of a problem, uh, it just flicks it into angle mode. We'll have a look at the mode in a second and uh, it stays armed. And if it continues for more than about a second, just drop the thing out of the sky. PID tuning is standard. We're using the standard beta flight controller. In the receiver tab, uh, here are all my controls moving. So there's my throttle, there's my yaw, there's my elevator and aileron. Um, so all of these need to be set so that they don't go below 1,000 and above 2,000. So for example, here's my roll, goes down to 1030 and up to 1990. Adjust your end points on your radio for each of the channels to make sure that happens. And then adjust the sub trims so that the roll pitch in your channels all settle to as close to 1500 as you can get. Now, if you come in here and you find that when you move your throttle, it's another channel that's moving. When you move your elevator, it's another channel that's moving. It's probably the channel map that's wrong. Just choose another one of these, save it and have another go. So you can see here that, like we did on the radio, auxiliary one, turn that off, auxiliary one is our modes, auxiliary two is going to be our arming switch. So let's jump into mode, show you how I've got that set up. Again, by default there was nothing set, so auxiliary two, which is my arming switch, is going to disarm and arm the board as I flick it. That's a little one in the middle at the front, easy to me to get to. And then the mode switch takes it from angle to horizon to rate mode i.e there's no mode set i haven't got air mode turned on we'll try it without apart from that that's pretty much everything we've done now in cli there is a pwm motor rate that some people have talked about now the, you can change the pwm motor rate to be other things but at the moment we're going to try and fly it without because it's behaving if i arm the board jump back into setup and reboot because we were in the CLI. If I arm the board, there we go, we can see we're armed and increase the throttle. You can hear the motors are all behaving perfectly. So let me disarm it, flip that switch. There we go. So it's at the point now where it's worthwhile popping on the props and taking it for a first test hover in the garden. Now, for those of you who are eagle-eyed, you'll have spotted that this isn't the garden because actually the weather outside is horrid. So we're not going to try a little test hover. But here it is just in the hall, inside, just perfect for a little test hover to just make sure that everything's working. And here in the bottom right-hand corner is the view from the camera. Now, the camera is much better outside and we'll look at that when we do the full review of this kit. But inside, even in these very low light conditions, because it's such an overcast, terrible day, it's handling itself fine. So hopefully that helps with those of you that are looking to do a brushed quadcopter over these dark winter months. It's an awful lot easier than it used to be, and we can still use a lot of the technology that we know and love, things like beta flight, clean flight, and things like that too. So stay tuned for the final video in the series, where we'll actually do a full review of this specific kit, but everything that we've just gone through and all the stuff we've talked about will be applicable for any brushed build regardless of what it is. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.